Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to my channel. It's Brittany here with another video to help you guys live a healthy, happy, awesome life in a wheelchair. And today I'm gonna go over the five questions that I think are important to ask before you go ordering your new wheelchair or choosing a new wheelchair. Uh, I recently went through the whole process to order a new wheelchair. And this time, unlike times in the past, I wanted to be really involved in the process and make sure that I was the driver in the driver's seat choosing all of the options on the wheelchair. Whereas before I always let the occupational therapist or the vendor kind of choose based on, you know, conversations we had, what they thought I needed and what was important in the wheelchair. Um, so this time I just wanted to do better. And I want you guys to be able to be knowledgeable about all of the things that you're gonna need in your wheelchair uh, and what's gonna be important for you to have maximum function in your wheelchair. Because at the end of the day, that's what the wheelchair is there to do. It's there to give you independence and provide maximum function. So let's jump right in. Question number one, I have my notes here so don't forget anything. What is your current function level? And this might seem like a silly question, but your current function level is gonna determine what kind of wheelchair you should get. And just because um, you've had a certain type of wheelchair for a long time, or uh, your friends have a certain type of wheelchair, that doesn't mean that's the wheelchair that's right for you. Again, a wheelchair is about making you most independent uh, in your daily living activities. And if you are a quadriplegic and you are currently in a manual wheelchair and you can't get around very easily, it's hard to push, um, all of those things, then maybe that's not the wheelchair that's right for you. Um, on the flip side, if you're a paraplegic and you've always been in a manual wheelchair and you know, you're know you aging and your shoulders are getting shot and your wrists are really bad and you constantly have pain and all of those things, maybe a manual wheelchair isn't the right one for you. So think about, how are you gonna operate the wheelchair? Can you operate it effectively? Is it going to give you the most independence um, in that way? Sometimes we make choices for other things rather than independence and that's okay. I know for myself right now, my choice of being in a manual wheelchair is partly about exercise. I think if I go into a power wheelchair, I won't get as much exercise. And so I think it's important for me as long as my shoulders and wrists can handle it. But there might come a time where my independence is more important than um, you know that exercise. Because at this point, it's serving a purpose. It's helping me stay fit. It's helping me stay thin. And that's important to me. But again, there might be a time that that isn't the case. So thinking about those things. Um, are you able to do pressure lifts on your own? Because if you are in a manual wheelchair, you have to be able to do pressure lifts on your own. The wheelchair, you can't tip back or recline or anything like that. And if you're in a wheelchair all day, you have to be able to think about that stuff. So what is your current function level and being really, really realistic about it um, and not just doing what you want to do because you have some sort of pride issue. I know I had to make that decision with my vehicle. I really wanted to just break my chair down and drag it into an SUV and look cool while I was driving. And then I decided why would I ever want to do that when it's gonna you know, destroy my wrists and make my clothes dirty. So in the end, I chose getting a lift in my van, even though, you know, it's a mom, it's a mom mobile, but oh well. Thinking about those things in your wheelchair is super important. Uh, question number two is, what are the most important indoor mobility factors? So there's a bunch of things under this that are important when you're thinking about wheeling around inside your own house. I'm talking specifically in your own house or indoor environments that you frequent. So if you have a job, if you are always at one of your friend's house or you have your in-laws or whatever the case, the indoor uh, mobility factors that are going to be important at all of the places that you uh, are most frequently. So things like transfer heights, is there a couch that you still need to be able to get on? Is there a bed you need to be able to get on from your wheelchair? Changing your wheelchair height in a new wheelchair by even a couple centimeters or a couple inches might mean the difference between losing independence, um, you know, getting into a bed at your in-laws or something. So thinking about those factors before you get your wheelchair and before you make changes is important. Is there any reach considerations inside your house? Um, I have a microwave that is above my stove. So I need to be able to reach certain things um, in my house and changing my wheelchair even by a little bit might make it so that I can't reach those things. So make sure you think about that. Um, are there any desks or tables you need to wheel under? There's nothing worse than getting a new wheelchair and going to wheel under your table or your desk that you always work at and your knees hit it. 
you'll be like, oh my God, why didn't I think of that? So always think about things that you always wheel under or that you need to get under with your wheelchair uh, because that will be super annoying if you make changes to your wheelchair and you can't get under it. Um, and then the last one in this, in this question is minimum door width. So this one might not seem like, you know, such an obvious thing, but it really can change the usability of your home. I didn't even think about this when I was ordering my wheelchair and, um, I just wanted to make it thin enough to get into skinny bathroom doors in some of my family members' houses because they live in older houses. So I was like, that's the minimum door width that I want to get into. And so we made the wheelchair uh, that narrow. And when I got it, I went to get in my pantry because it is a skinny door as well. And I wheeled right in and I was like, hallelujah, you should have seen me. I freaked out. I was like, Jacob. And he thought I was dying, but I was actually just celebrating that I was able to get in the pantry and reach things that I haven't been able to reach for eight whole years. So these things can really make your life uh, better in some ways and really horrible if you don't have these considerations and then you get a wheelchair that's too wide. Um, and you can't get in somewhere that you normally would want to get into. So these things are really important and simple little tweaks on the wheelchair can affect the width of the wheelchair. You don't even have to change the, you know, your seat width. You might still just get the same seat width if you haven't changed weight or width or anything like that, but then you can make the tires closer to the wheelchair body. You can take your push rims and move them in. So there's a whole bunch of things that you can do that actually make the wheelchair more narrow. You can reduce the camber um, and that will allow you to get in somewhere that you've never been able to get into. So that's number two. Number three is what are the most important outdoor mobility factors? So the biggest one for this one is transportation. How do you get around outside of your house um, and what things are important for that? So somebody that is, you know, breaking down their chair and dragging it over their body into their vehicle, that's how they drive. That's gonna be a big deal when they're ordering another wheelchair or choosing another wheelchair. Weight's gonna be a factor. Um, having, you know, excess accessories on it is gonna be a factor because they'll either have to take them off like side guards. Um, or they're going to be in the way when they're lifting them if you can't remove the side guards. So those things are going to be important when they are choosing what type of wheelchair to get. Um, what type of wheeling around environment do you have outside? So somebody that lives in a city and, you know, wheels on pavement 90% of the time is going to get a different wheelchair than somebody that lives on a farm and has, you know, grass and dirt and gravel to wheel around on. If you live in an area that isn't very wheelchair accessible, Maybe you're gonna get bigger tires, uh, bigger casters, things like that, um, so that you can wheel better wherever you live. You might think about where your center of gravity is on the wheelchair uh, so that it's either more stable, if you want it to be more stable in your wheeling environment or more tippy, uh, so that you have a uh, better ability to go over bumps and things like that. So that's gonna be an important factor. Um, and then reach considerations and transfer heights, I put in this one as well because if you need to be able to get into somebody's vehicle, if you need to be able to get, um, I don't know, on a yard swing, whatever it is that you like to be able to get on outside, think about those things uh, before you order the wheelchair and make any changes. And then one of the big ones for me is um, in order to get into a vehicle, like transfer into a vehicle, I use what I affectionately call, or that my dad has always called the holy shit handle. Um, it's like the, the handle at the top of the vehicle that People use to get in. I'm like, who does? Who even uses that thing? But I use it to pull myself into a vehicle and I need to be able to reach that holy shit handle when I'm sitting in my chair um, at the bottom, like on the ground. And so if even just like one inch, because sometimes I'm like really barely just reaching it with my hands, one inch difference in, in my wheelchair height, if it was lower, I wouldn't be able to reach it. So uh, if you have to reach something in order to transfer into your vehicle, like the steering wheel, the seat, whatever it is, uh, then just make sure you measure those things before you start going through the whole measuring and wheelchair sizing process so that you know uh, what considerations you need to keep in mind for, uh, for the actual wheelchair. Number four is what things do you do in your wheelchair frequently on a daily basis and what things about your wheelchair, current wheelchair, are helpful or not helpful. So as an example, sometimes I get dressed in my wheelchair. Most of the time I get dressed 
on my bed. But if I'm like trying on clothes, uh, at the mall or whatever, then I get dressed in my wheelchair. Or if I'm at like the doctor's office or something and I have to get undressed, then I get dressed again in my wheelchair. And in my old wheelchair, my side guards were really low. And so I could lean on my tire to kind of like, you know, lift up with my elbow and pull up my pants with the other side. And then on this new wheelchair, I increased the, the height of my side guards because I thought it was gonna help keep the snow contained in the winter time. Now I can't lean on my tire because they, there is like this insanely sharp edge that's an inch above my tire that I would have to lean my elbow on. And so I've had to figure out how to like lift up on the back of my wheelchair, which doesn't work as well for me to pull my pants on. And so I didn't even think when I was ordering my wheelchair that there would be things about my actual wheelchair that were helpful for me um, during the day. So I don't know for you if there are things in your wheelchair that's helpful, but just go about your day before you start ordering another wheelchair or sizing another wheelchair or choosing another wheelchair and think about the things that you do. Get dressed in your wheelchair and be like, is there a place that I lean on my wheelchair that's important? Is there something that I grab when I'm bending over? Like I know for myself, if I'm bending over to grab something off the ground, I always grab the, uh, the, the, the cane. And so that's important for me. If it's super low or if that wasn't there, I don't know what I would do. So just go about your day thinking about the things about your wheelchair that are actually helpful. And on the flip side, think about the things that are super annoying about your wheelchair. If there's something on your wheelchair that you're just like, oh, this is so annoying. There's something that snags or there's something that's always in the way. You can change that on your new wheelchair. So just, yeah, go about your day and then make notes about what you would like to change and what you definitely want to keep because it's helpful. Um, and then the last question is how durable do you need your wheelchair to be? So this question is totally going to depend on your lifestyle, but it's something you have to think about because if you go, oh, well, I want, you know, a carbon fiber wheelchair, which is super light, it might not stand up if it's getting thrown around in an airplane. I did a video all about um, wheelchair materials a few weeks ago, so I'll link to that. And it talks about the durability of the different types of wheelchair materials that you can get, at least in the high end uh, wheelchair market. The, the durability definitely is gonna be a factor for whatever you do. So you might uh, want a certain wheelchair material, uh, but it's not actually gonna be that durable. Or you might not really need that durable of a wheelchair. if you don't travel that much, your wheelchair doesn't get thrown around, you don't really do much in your wheelchair other than, you know, get in your vehicle and go to work and then come home, then durability might not be a huge factor. So you can kind of go on the lower end of the, the, the cost spectrum in that regard. So that's, that's the questions I came up with and most of them I came up with because I didn't think about any of them when I was choosing my own wheelchair. So I hope I've saved you a little bit of headache and I hope uh, that these questions were helpful um, I will put all of these questions in a little cheat sheet that you can download and I'll put that in the description below uh, in case anybody wants to have them on hand um, just so they don't forget them. Thanks so much for watching guys. I will catch you on my next video. Bye.